If you're watching this movie, that means that you need a little extra help with completing the square. There's 10 problems here. We're actually going to do probably number 2, 3, and 4. Uh, make sure you have the white packet in front of you and take a few notes on the back side of the packet just so I can show you how this works. So completing the square means that we're actually going to physically complete the square. So if you have a problem that looks like this, x squared uh, plus 6x um, plus something, we're going to put in those blanks and figure out what goes in those blanks. So how does that look in terms of um, figures? Well, you have an x squared box, and this has to do with the area model. x times x gives you that x squared. But you also have these long versions. And those are x's. OK, so if you have six of those, and we want to make this figure into a square, we need to split those six up and put them on each side. So we split six up evenly. And that would give us three here and three here. So now each side has an x and a positive three and an x and a positive three. So, so far it's a square and our job is, is to complete that square. So what would we fit in here? And we have to fill it with things that look like this. So let me uh, turn this into a cloner here, and if you notice, then you can fit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 of those singletons in there. Now each one of those represents a 1. So there are 9 that complete the square. So a quick recap then, we took this number, split it in half, put half of them on top, half of them on the bottom, and then figured out what completes the square, what singles completes the square. So if we split six in half, we get three, and then three squared ends up being the nine. That goes in the, in the blank. And then this can be written as x plus three squared. When you factor two numbers that multiply to be nine, and add to be six, are 3 and 3, so x plus 3 squared. So that's going to help us when we get to these problems of so completing the square. We're going to do number 2, 3, and 4, then you'll have practice on like 7 more. So um, if we think of a squared minus 8a, that means on that box, if I do this quick, we're going to put 4 of them here and 4 of them here. So our goal is to kind of figure out what do we fit in here to complete that square. 1, 2, 3, 4. And there's four rows of those, or you can think four times four, and I'll give you 16. So writing this out, we're going to move the 20 to the other side, becomes positive 20, and we're going to put in a couple of blanks. So a blank here, and then remember in an equation you need to do the same to both sides, and a blank there. We figured out that 16 completes that square, so our problem then becomes a minus 4 squared equals 36. And this then is this a really easy square root problem. And when you square root both sides, you get a minus 4, and you get positive and negative 6. So to solve then, we're at 4 to both sides. And a is, let's see, positive 6 plus 4, that's 10. And negative 6 plus 4, that's negative 2. So those are our two answers. Okay, completing the square. We're actually physically completing a square. So let's look at number 3. I'm going to move that 51 to the other side and rewrite this. r squared minus 16r plus something equals negative 51 plus something. Now if you think of the square this time, don't actually write it out. There's 16 of those long skinny ones. So that's 8 on each side. And then 8 times 8 is 64. So the left-hand side becomes r minus 8 squared. Two numbers that multiply to be 64 and add to be negative 16. And then the right-hand side becomes 13. And the rest of the steps are all the same. We're going to square root both sides. This one doesn't turn out to be a perfect square. So it's positive and negative square root of 13. 
Now in this case, if you could simplify that, you would. And then we will add 8 to both sides. And we cannot add 8 to square roots of 13. So our answer is just written this way. Positive 8 plus and minus the square root of 13. Quick check. 8 plus 13, 8 minus 13. All right, we'll do one more, and then I'll release you to do the rest. So we'll move 72 across, becomes negative 72, and we'll write in the blanks. 10 squared minus 12n plus something to complete the square equals negative 72 plus that same something. So think of the box, negative 12 ends, we put 6 on each side, and then in order to complete that square, the red circle like above, 6 on each side means 6 times 6 is 36. That means this one is n minus 6 squared, 6 on each side, and this is negative 36. Same steps as before, we'll square root both sides, Left-hand side becomes n minus 6. And then the right-hand side, 36 is a perfect square, but that negative means that we have 6 i's, 6 imaginary pieces there. And then the last part, we'll add 6 to both sides. And we cannot add 6 and 6 i. So we'll leave our answer as positive 6 plus or minus 6 i. There you have it. If you need more help than this, um, review this movie, but then go see your teacher after before or after school. Hopefully this helps you get through completing this work.